present that might be interested in uh, adding some of their code to Jetscape or testing some of their code in the Jetscape, uh, taking advantage of the Jetscape framework. Um, so what, what one needs to do to write a custom module, I talked a little bit in the lecture, you basically need, need to uh, inherit your module from a relevant base class. So if you want to uh, implement an initial state module or a jet energy loss module or some other type, you should inherit from the appropriate base class. Um, and then we just need to implement some kind of standard functions. So to do this, um, we made just a very simple uh, kind of skeleton or dummy version of uh, an example of this, which is a jet energy loss module. And so this, um, these, this custom module is sitting uh, inside this summer school 2020 directory. So if you run this command here um, to copy uh, this, these files, so summer school 2020 slash framework session slash my jet energy loss star. So there's two files that should copy a header and a dot C file and copy that into your Jetscape uh, directory, Jetscape slash source slash jet. So depending where you, um, um, uh, so I, I see actually one, um, one point that I, I have to say I overlooked. So this, this file, um, these files were actually added quite recently um, to this repository. So I, I somewhat forgot a step actually. Um, the, what you'll need to do is, um, uh, run a uh, run git pull so so maybe let me very quickly um, just explicitly type this out so you you need to basically update the git repository um, so you can do this by running by changing directory to this summer school 2020 directory and then running a git pull command. Um, or so if you have a git account set up, this should, this should work um, immediately. If you don't have a git have account set up, um, there is also a simple way we can work around that. Uh, just give me one moment to share again my screen. Um, okay, so I, I just wanted to, um, so I can type in a couple of uh, extra commands here. Um, so what you can do is you should first cd uh, change directory into this summer school 2020 directory. Um, and then you can uh, execute git pull. Um, Now, if this, uh, if this doesn't work, um, so if this doesn't work, there is an alternative thing we can do. I'll just type here, um, which is we can just uh, remove this directory here. Um, and then, uh, oops, that didn't show up very nicely. Uh, and, then, and then, but okay, I think you can see it okay. And then we can rerun this git clone command. Um, so that, I, I apologize for that little hiccup there. Um, okay, so uh, because of this, okay, let, let's uh, let's clear out again the yes no boxes if we could from the chairs. Done. By the way, the count before we were there was um, seventy five to seven. So we've had a little bit of attrition um, throughout the sessions, but hopefully people can catch up overnight because I think if we want you to do one thing, it's everything we cover in this session.
Right, right. Um, so, okay, good. So now if, if all of you, um, since they had this little hiccup for some in the command, um, please, if you can get this copy command to work now successfully for you. So after updating your Git um, repository for summer school 2020, now execute this copy um, command uh, and then enter a yes if that works for you um, and enter a no if it doesn't. We have no no's, one no, and the yeses are ticking up pretty quickly. Okay, good, good. Okay, so, so I think then um, we can move ahead. Hang on, we're at 65 yeses and three noes. So I think maybe give people a minute or two. Okay, sure, sure. Yeah, let's, let's try to let everybody catch up. We're at 73 to three which is almost as high as 74, almost as high as we had on the previous one. So that might be a good time to move on. Okay, very good. Sorry, I just will briefly switch back to this PDF for simplicity. Okay, so now that we've copied that file, um, so th those files are now sitting kind of inside the Jetscape um, source directory. So they're sitting next to other uh, Jetscape jet energy loss modules. And now let's let's open up this file. So take a look uh, to start with this myjel.h. Um, and what you see here is exactly what I um, show on this slide. It's just a header file, which implements just a couple of standard functions. So these are the ones that are circled here. So there's a function called init, there's a function called do energy loss, and a function write task, and then a little bit of other technical stuff that you can ignore for the moment. So these, these functions that are circled, these are the only functions that your module needs to implement. Um, these, these will be called by the framework automatically at the appropriate time. So what you can notice also is do jet energy loss. This function takes some parameters in. Um, so it takes, for example, you see a vector of parton objects, p in and another vector p out. So that means that um, you will, your module will have access, it will have some partons, some input partons that feed into it. Um, and uh, some, and then you will feed out some output partons once you have done whatever you want to do in your jet energy loss. So I, I do want to point out here that this, this is a specific example for implementing a jet energy loss um, module. Uh, for different types of modules, there, there are some different standard functions that you will need to implement. Um, so details of this are written in the manual. Um, again, if, if you're trying to implement something else and it's not working, please um, also get in contact with us and we can, we can clarify that. Okay, so now um, there's, there's a couple of steps in general that one needs to do to write a custom module. And this, this is documented, I think, reasonably well on the GitHub as well. Um, there, in order for your module to get recognized by the framework, um, there's a couple lines of code you need to add to them. So in the header file, um, there is uh, this, this line static register Jetscape module with some other stuff. Uh, that just showed up. That was the stuff at the bottom of this header file here. Uh, so this basically allows that the Jetscape framework can automatically detect that your module is you know, a, a real module to, to be run. 
And then there's a second thing in the in the .cc file. Um, there is one other change one needs to make, and this one is a bit more important to pay attention to. Um, so I I would ask now that you take a look into this my jel.cc file, and um, at the kind of towards the top of that file, you should see a line that looks something like this one. Or the comment says register the module with the base class. And then there is this uh, kind of um, bulky syntax that says register Jetscape module, um, my class. So there will be substituted, uh, say, my JEL, which is the, the name of our class. And then there is this thing that says my class reg, and then this thing in uh, quote marks here, which says custom module, blah, blah. And this, this name in quotes here is the name uh, that we want to put into the XML file in order for Jetscape to run our module. Okay, so um, inside, uh, okay, I forget actually off the top of my head what exactly that, that is called for this example, Jet Energy Loss module is called custom module my jet energy loss, maybe something similar to that. And so you don't actually need to modify this in the example. It's it's all there for you. Um, but you want to be aware that if you are um, adapting this example to your own custom module that you want to implement, that you should, uh, this name in the quotation marks is the exact name that you should put in the XML file. Um, to, to specify your module. So it's different, uh, just to, to emphasize, there's a name of your class, which is called my JEL in this case. That would go where it says my class here and here. And then this name in quotes is where the XML recognizes it. So these are two different, uh, two different things. And it's important also um, just for technical reasons until your module is, is officially incorporated into the Jetscape um, code, there's just like one extra thing we need to do. You need to add uh, this, your module should start with the name custom module like this. This will tell the framework that it can automatically steer this and that it should look to find some custom module that is not defined in the um, kind of core set of Jetscape modules. Okay, so now uh, we copied those, this example file of a new module. Uh, we put it in the source directory next to all the other modules. Um, so now all we have to actually do is to build Jetscape again. Okay, so we did this already in the prep instructions. Um, so now that we put that file there, we should execute these commands again. So we should change directory back to the Jetscape slash build directory. And then we should run cmake uh, dot dot. And then we should run make again. So, so this will take a moment. Um, it, it should compile much more quickly than the first time you did it because it doesn't, uh, doesn't need to compile everything again, but only those things that have changed. Um, so let's, let's take a minute to do this. And um, let's again, if the chairs could clear out the, um, the yes, no buttons. Um, once that is done. Yep, we, I just did that. Before that, we were at 83 to 1. So it looks like a lot of the no's are, were getting caught up in the middle. Perfect, perfect. Um, good. So, so now, uh, now that it's cleared, go ahead and enter again. Uh, once you get the compilation to actually mean, uh, to actually uh, run successfully. Um, so enter yes if you if you get to successfully build Jetscape again, and um, we'll check in in a couple minutes. Uh, you can enter no if you're still working at that point. Sorry, James. To clarify, the way you want it is when they have successfully recompiled this module, not they don't have to also run it. Right, just yes. when you've recompiled Jetscape, uh, exactly. If you get the make to run all the way then enter yes. And so to be clear, so yeah, we didn't actually modify these, this uh, new jet energy loss module. We just had to copy it. So again, we, we copied it um, 
into this particular directory here in Jetscape, Jetscape slash source slash jet. And then now that that file is there, um, we can build Jetscape again. So when we run CMake, uh, CMake is kind of, it's basically configured that it will compile everything in that directory that it finds. Um, so we just need to recompile and then our new module will be compiled in, and usable inside of Jetscape. And so once, um, once we get everybody caught up on this point, we will uh, um, actually run this module. But let's, let's give a couple of minutes since the compilation also can take a different amount of time on different people's machines. We are at 67 and zero no's. So it looks like the people who have, uh, who were stuck somewhere have gotten unstuck. Excellent, that's what I like to hear. And the yeses are ticking up. We're at 75 now. Okay, great. Let's give it maybe just one or two more minutes then. So in the meantime, if you're kind of waiting, um, you can also, you can have a look uh, a bit more into this my jel.cc file. And uh, in particular, this kind of main function called do energy loss. Um, you'll see that in this example, it's really kind of a dummy example. It, it doesn't, you know, there's not a real physics uh, uh, theory implemented here. I think it's just, I just print out some, maybe I think I printed out the energy of the partons that, uh, that are, uh, that appear in that function without actually changing them in any way. Um, so th this is just an example to show you how to add this external custom module to the framework. Um, of course, if you're developing things, that is then the exact place that your physics code should go. Um, so here is here is more just the technical side of things. What does it take to add a custom module? We are at eighty three yeses, which it, and zero noes. So I think that's most of the people. One no now, two. Ah, I okay. I one again. <laughs> so I, I I think that that's pretty much as many as we've had for a few cycles. Okay, perfect. So let's let's move on ahead then. Um, so now the next step is we're going to actually run this module. So to do this, let's open up again our uh, Jetscape user XML file. So Jetscape user pp19.xml. And then what we need to add, we need to add in a little block of code uh, in the energy loss section. So you can find this, this part, which is about 20 lines into the file called eLoss. And there is a section called matter there. And then right below that, where this circle is, we should add in uh, the following code. So add in this XML tag that says custom module my JEL. Um, there's also a field like a, for a parameter called name that you can put there. I think it's actually not necessary, but, um, and then this closing XML tag at the bottom. So I'll give you a moment to do this. Um, and then once, once it's done, um, so I'll go back again to that command in a second for those who are catching up. But once you edited the, the file like that, you can just run Jetscape again in the usual way that we've run it. So from inside the Docker container, you go to your build directory and then you just execute run Jetscape and pass to it um, this XML file. So let me just sit on this slide for a moment for those of you that are opening the XML file and typing in um, this custom module. So again, after, after we compiled Jetscape with our new module, all we have to do is add to the user XML file um, this, uh, this tag. 
And of course, if we modify our module, you know, we add some more C++ code into the function do energy loss, for example, um, we would need to recompile Jetscape. So anytime we change the C++ code, we need to, we need to rerun the C make and make, of course. Um, but we can, uh, we can then just run the module itself by adding it to the XML file itself. <clears throat> We're at 85 to one. I think you're about to have another task for them, right? Okay, great. So we're, we're getting actually close to the end, which is great because our time is uh, running out. So when, if you, if you run this command, then um, you should, uh, you should see if you look into the standard output, you should see a printout here that is telling you um, which modules have been added. When, uh, which modules are being run, really. And so you should see appear there something that says uh, eloss added custom module my JEL to the eloss list. And you will see also below, I mean, if you're running this code, I think there's really a lot of printouts that you'll be getting spammed with of parton, input partons to this module. If that's working, that's perfect. That's, uh, that means we've successfully added our new module to the framework and we're running it successfully. Um, and so this, this, uh, this really is um, the last main piece that I wanted to get through today. Um, there are a couple homework pieces or additional pieces, quick things uh, to prepare for the next sessions, but let's, um, let's give uh, just a, a couple of minutes for people to, to catch up here. Um, and again, please, please enter no uh, at this point if you need more time or this isn't working yet for you. So James, this is a new question to make sure that everybody has run their module. Uh, yes, yes. Um, okay. I, I, think it's, I think it's okay also at this point. Um, well, yeah, actually, if you could clear it out. Um, yeah, okay. That, that would be great, thanks. We were at 80 to seven, but I think that it was getting a little muddy which question they, whether they had compiled or had run. Right, no, thanks, thanks for clarifying that. Okay, so now, now that we're cleared, yeah, please go ahead and enter again. Yes, if you have successfully run this module and you see these printouts um, and enter no if you need some more time. Twenty nine to six. And so when you're running Jetscape also make sure so we, we, we call this run Jetscape executable and then there is uh, this XML path that we pass. So make sure if, if for example, you, you, um, you should run this command from the build directory in Jetscape. So Jetscape slash build uh, as we've done previously. Um, otherwise, uh, otherwise it might not find this XML path written here. And then whenever, whenever you run here, so here we actually don't really care so much about the output file because we haven't actually added any new physics in our, our custom module. But as usual, the, the output file would be written in the same directory that this run Jetscape command uh, is executed. And here, um, so let, let me also say, in order for you to enter yes, um, you don't actually need to have this complete running the events. Um, really just what one wants to see is that it's running and it's printing out a bunch of uh, spam to you about parton energy. Um, and that you can see in the, at the start of the output uh, that this custom module, my energy loss was added to the list. 
So depending how many events you have currently set in your XML, it might take some time to run. That's that's okay. We don't actually need to get the output file from this. We really just want to see that the the custom module itself is successfully picked up and running by the framework. We are at 54 to 8 with some active discussion on the Slack. And 62 to 9, so there's quite a few people who are who either need more time or are stuck. Okay, okay, good. Yeah, let's let's take a few minutes still. Um, I'm not quite sure what the issues people are having are. Um, there is some discussion on the Slack, but I think most of the questions appear to be answered. So let, let's just give a couple more minutes for people to run, and if you're stuck on something, please post a question. We're at 71 to 9, so the yeses are ticking up, but the noes are kind of static. Oh, we just got one. <laughs> Uh, so, okay, so I think I may have said uh, actually one minor incorrect thing that this, uh, so in, in this XML file, there is this name um, parameter, uh, which I think I said maybe is not necessary, but it, it seems, uh, okay, I forgot it actually is necessary to have this name. Uh, inside of here where it says blah, 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 you can put, you know, absolutely anything you want, um, but uh, you should have something entered in this name here, or else. Uh, so th this is you can see see the details also of this in the the myjel.cc file um, that uh, that in the initialization function there is an example of reading this name parameter from the XML file. Um, so in general, one can actually set when one is configuring a module whether an XML parameter can be required or whether uh, it's only optional. Um, so that's, uh, there are more details of that in the XML reader itself. Um, but since if you see some, pro some error message that you didn't specify this name line and the code is crashing, try just adding that name line there and running again. And you, yeah, you can also, um, you can reduce your number of events if you want to avoid just getting spammed out with information. You know, you can run one event or 10 events or something instead of a few hundred. Um, but again, the, or you, you know, you can run with whatever number of events you want. And as long as you see a bunch of output part on information being printed, you can just quit immediately and things are working successfully. We're at 74 to 8, so the no's are kind of stuck. I think make a decision based on how much you have left, whether you wrap it up and we catch the no's up overnight, or 
if I'm not yeah, sure so how much. So let, let's take let's take just two more minutes to give people a chance. Um, uh, the, the only thing remaining is just to um, tell what is the, the homework exercises. Which are which are brief. So if any of you are not able to actually see the, the custom module running, make sure that you add this block, this custom module, my JEL to your user XML file. So specifically this Jetscape user pp19.xml and that you add it in this, um, this exact location here. Eighty to seven. Okay, so let's, let's, um, let's go ahead and just finish up then. And so for, for any who are uh, still having issues, um, I, I'll stick around on the Slack so we can um, try to troubleshoot uh, any, any final problems that you weren't able to resolve. Um, so the, the last thing then for today is there's just a couple of very brief um, things that, that I will need you to do in preparation for uh, the upcoming sessions. Um, so this shouldn't take long at all, but it's very important so that you're prepared. So there's two things. Um, one uh, is that we need to update uh, the Jetscape repository itself. So I forgot, as you have seen, to mention this for the summer school 2020 repository. Uh, but specifically for the Jetscape repository, we need to um, update uh, uh, to pull some recent changes in the, I think from last week that came in, uh, which, which will be useful for the later physics sessions. Um, so just follow the instructions here. I think you all know how to do this since you just did it for the summer school uh, repository. And then the second thing uh, is that I want you to build Jetscape um, enabling all of the external packages. So these are various packages that we downloaded during the prep instructions. So to get uh, packages like music, for example. And so there, there's instruction here, which I think should be clear to follow. Um, we do a similar thing to build Jetscape as before, except we add these three CMake options here, uh, which will build Jetscape with these particular external packages enabled. Um, and then you just run make as usual. Um, and so again, make sure you do this inside the Docker container, but um, uh, having, this, um, having this set up will be used later in the session. So, um, and it, it can take a bit longer to, depending how fast your computer is to compile this. I mean, not super long, but might be more than a few minutes. Um, so it's just good to have this done uh, beforehand, uh, before the sessions. Um, okay, so with that, that's everything that I wanted to go through today. Um, I hope it was useful for you. And please uh, continue to write any questions you have on the Slack. Um, and actually, in, in the session tomorrow, so tomorrow we will have, um, we will have just a one hour follow up session to this framework uh, discussion. And there, um, there is actually not additional exercises we have in mind, um, but uh, is more uh, intended to be a Q&A. So now that you, um, you have 
had some experience running these things today. Um, and you will have also the, the rest of today or, or tomorrow morning, depending where your time zone is, you might think of some additional questions um, uh, to try. And so if, if there are no questions, I can, I can show kind of some other variations of, of these exercises or, or maybe some other tips that uh, one can do. But um, I think it's most useful if, if we come just with some general uh, Q&A time to make sure everybody has a, a decent understanding of the framework before we um, move on to the physics sessions, which will really require uh, that we have these steps to work. Um, okay, so with that, yeah, thank you to everybody for following along and helping each other out. Um, and I will look forward to seeing you all again tomorrow. All right. Thanks, everybody. And, and let me emphasize, because this really is a prerequisite for the future sessions, if you did get a little bit behind for whatever reason, please do um, catch up overnight and follow up on the uh, and with follow up questions on the Slack if needed. And if there's nothing else, let's uh, let's thank James and everybody, um, all of the TAs, this was great. Um, you can do that by uh, putting a thumbs up in the latest comment saying thanks to James. And we'll close and I'm going to post the recordings this afternoon in case they're useful. Thanks, everybody. Okay, thank you, Christine. Bye.